We're doing a tutorial today, and this Affinity Photo tutorial is so fun, it's gonna melt this guy's face off. Let's go! What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Connery. I'm an artist and merch designer. Yes, that's what I'm calling myself now. I was thinking about this, I was thinking to myself and I said, you know, before I used to call myself an editorial designer and I still can do those things, but I don't do them anymore so much. I've stopped doing a lot of client work. I'm not making magazines and publications and whatnot unless I was to do something for myself and I'm not, I'm doing a lot more merch. So that's what I am, merch designer. At your service. You already know that I've been making a lot of t-shirts this month and I've also been playing around with the new techniques and I saw this technique uh, somewhere. I apologize to whoever I learned it from. I don't remember, but I'm gonna share this with you because I think it's kind of fun. You can play around with it to your heart's content. Have some good times. I've been having a blast. Into the screen. Basically what we're going to do is take Bob Dabalina here and turn him from this to this. Ha ha ha, let's go. This process is pretty quick and simple. It just takes a few quick short steps and some thoughts as far as like what type of imagery to use. So we'll get through it pretty quickly, I hope. Fingers crossed. Now every time I've tried this, it's always been on a very high contrast black and white image. I haven't tried it on a color image. It might work. You have to be a little bit careful with this. If you do it wrong, it could get a little bit muddy and convoluted and kind of to take away from the aspects of what you're trying to create. As you can see, I've already got in pretty high contrast, but as you can, it's got a lot of uh, pixelation and some uh, dot pattern there from uh, some noise and half toning and whatnot. And so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna throw two things on here. I'm gonna throw a little bit of a Gaussian blur to soften him up, and then I'm gonna do a threshold adjustment. Now that Gaussian blur layer is a live layer, so I can change it on the fly, and that threshold adjustment can also be changed on the fly. And this is what I kind of came up with. I wanna have crisp, relatively clean lines. I don't want to have a lot of blurring and I don't want to have too many gray areas. When I do this, if I carry on too much of the darkness, too much of the gray, it'll just be like a blob and you don't want that. Now just for our purposes, I'm gonna grab these three, I'm gonna group them and I'm going to actually duplicate that. I'm gonna Command J, that duplicates that group and then I'm going to rasterize that group. That way my original is, is sitting pretty still. Now I'm gonna take my marquee selection, my rectangle marquee selection, and I'm just gonna draw until I get to a point where I think is pretty good. This line where this cuts is going to matter. And I don't want it to be in an area that's like, I don't want it to be too all white and I don't want it to be too all black. I want it somewhere in the middle. And I'm kind of thinking somewhere along this guy's mouth, but he's a little bit tilted, the mouth is a little bit off, it's okay. So I'm just gonna come maybe right about there. Cause that way I'm getting this black line in here, but I'm getting a lot of white space in here and then I'm getting some in there. So it, it's still gonna carry through. So I back out and I select my move tool and on that layer, I'm just gonna grab him and move him up wherever. I'm gonna reverse the selection so I can select the other half. Command Shift I selects the other side and I'm just gonna drag that down. So I deselect it and you can see pretty big gap. We'll see how this lines up. That mouth may not be the best placement for my line so I might end up having to do this more than one time but we'll check it out. Now I'm gonna to go to my row marquee tool. If you were doing this, you could also split sideways and do the column marquee tool. It works both directions. You should play around with it, you know, and see what works best for you. But we're gonna try the row marquee tool. Now I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna select my row right at the very last pixel here. Make sure I'm on the right layer. And I'm gonna command J. So now I have that one pixel row all the way across as its own separate image or separate layer. So now I hit the move tool again, and you can see it's giving me the transform. And this is gonna get a little weird. This actually works better in Photoshop. It's a little bit more crisper. It just uh, takes a little bit more effort here in Affinity Photo because what happens, what I've noticed is that when I drag down, I get a softening. That softening is easily fixed, but it's a little weird. Now you also see that the line kind of continues past where I've stopped. That will actually disappear as soon as I release my, or deselect my selection right now. So there you go, I've dragged it from the, the top edge here all the way to the bottom edge down here. Let those pixels overlap. Command D to deselect. Oh, there you go, so now it's working. So it's just a matter of the, the graphics cards. Ah! So now I'm going to take this layer and to make sure that I get it good and dark like the rest of the image, I'm just going to duplicate that layer, go to multiply, and then duplicate this quite a few times until I make sure that I have a good saturation point. Now I'm gonna take those, group all those together, and then rasterize that down. 
I almost wish I had a little bit more detail in here. So maybe this isn't the best one, but we're gonna make it work. So now what I wanna do, make sure I'm on that layer, and then I'm gonna go to the Liquify Persona. Now it's important that when you do this, you don't cross over that line at the top or that line at the bottom, because you don't want the joining point to skew. You want everything in the middle to be skewed. So you may have to bring down the size of your brush or your move, and then you're just gonna move through here and just kinda go through this. Now again, I think I probably picked a not the best spot. You decide that on your own. And if you need to come up in size a little bit to kind of create some more movement, or if you want to mess around with some of the other tools like the twirl, the bloat, any of these other ones, you can do that too. For our purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and do this because this does take a process and sometimes you'll have to experiment and do it a couple more times, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. I think I like this one better where I grabbed it more around the bridge of the nose and moved up like that. This line right here is a little weird. What I probably would have done is kind of cap this one off so it didn't look like a straight line. In fact, if I do that, if I just take my brush, maybe brush in so that it's like that, and then right here too, brush in like that, it looks a little bit more natural. Now this is where it's looking a little weird over here, so I'm gonna go in there like that, and maybe this curve is not quite right, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You just don't want these hard edges. I see I did kind of tweak it here. I did kind of get a little bit too deep into the uh, into the edge there and it kind of moved it. So I can always come down in size. Nobody's gonna know that this wasn't the way it was intended to look originally. You know, we just make do. We make it look the way we wanna make it. I don't wanna soften it too much because obviously every line that I have on this thing right now is super crisp. If needed, I can go back in with the threshold and just add more threshold to it. And there you have it. And I can easily take this and turn this into a t-shirt graphic. Just say Bob. If you don't know who Bob Dobbelina is, look it up. Internet, search Google, Wikipedia it, Bob. Or Bob Dobb is how he's often referred to. If you don't know Bob Dobb, you better go ask somebody. So there's a lot of potential to have some good time, some fun, just tweak this thing up. And you can play with it and even try it. You may even try it with color images if you want to see how it works out. Uh, maybe in the past you've seen this was actually a thing back in the early 2000s where people would take an image and they would do the same process and just kind of drag out a certain amount of pixels across the screen and make them turn and tweak. And it just kind of created this kind of zoomy kind of look to it. Pretty cool, but a little bit played out now, but some people are still trying to bring it back and whatnot. But I think it looks cool, looks cool here on uh, Bob. I've also done a few other ones. This grumpy old dude, you know, he was a little too grumpy, so I figured I needed to, you know, stretch him out a bit. And this one I even added, and I didn't do it perfect, but I even added a little bit of halftone to that one just to kind of make it uh, fit a little bit better, but it's not perfect, I would probably redo that one. If you watched my live stream the other day, you recognize this young lady, and she's a little bit stretchier and longer than she was before. And of course, everybody's favorite Texas fascist, Governor Greg Abbott, everybody. I, you know, gave him a little bit bigger braid because he needs one. Anyway, so uh, that <laughs> that's pretty much it. If you want to test this out, go for it. And if you want to share what you've done, please send it my way. I'd love to see what fun stuff you get into with this technique. You might go at angles, you might, or if you split somebody apart, like, you know, like, a, like some sort of like horror movie thing where you chop them in half and all their guts are like, Bleh. you could do that. Anyway. <laughs> Hope you appreciate that little tutorial. If you want some more Affinity tutorials, they're uh, right there, right? Check some of those out, all right? In the meantime, be good today. Be even better tomorrow. See ya. Is my face melting yet?